Good morning, everybody. It's Marion Wallace with uh, Restoring Ghettos Forgotten. And uh, I'm on my way to the office again this morning, but I felt like it was a good time for me to go ahead and shoot another video. Again, I'm trying to get more content out on my page, but I'm such a busy person. It's, it's kind of hard to do that, but I'll try a little bit harder. Um, so today is, I'm gonna have another conversational piece because I didn't have time to prepare. Uh, you have to forgive me. Uh, I have two businesses. I have a real estate business and I also have a tax business. So I'm constantly moving and on the go, not to mention I have a family and all that stuff. So it's kind of hard for me to, to make a video every day. I don't see how people do it. I guess they do social media. I guess that's how they earn their living or whatever and they do it every day. But I, I can't humanly do that every day with, with how much I have going on. But today's conversational piece is going to be about, um, I want to phrase this the right way because people are real, it's a really touchy subject, but um, it's about giving and, and how we give and how we can take away from our gifts by how loud we are. Now, let me make this clear and concise because there's there seems to be something going on um, on my social media channels, I see a lot of it actually, about people that are extremely uh, financially well off that constantly post about how blessed they are. And hey, I'm celebrating if, if God bless you. I don't know your story. I don't know where you come from. And I know a lot of us fight hair tooth and nail to become financially stable and what we deem as successful. Um, so kudos to you. I never have a problem with people advancing and building wealth because I think too many of us don't do that. Too many of us spend everything that we earn for show, to show and tell to other people, but we are broke. You know, we have no money put up. We have no investments. We have no savings. We can't even bury ourselves, you know, once we, once we leave this world. So I love the fact that my people are starting to realize that we can't be that way, that we have to be more um, conservative as in to not spending everything we own or we, we earn, I guess I should say. And so that's not the problem I'm having with um, people making money and being what they call it blessed by God. Now let's get this straight because I think this needs to be clear. Not everybody that has financial means was necessarily blessed by God to get those means. Let's get that straight first. Uh, just because you're financially blessed, it could have been something that you did or, or, or something other than God. Because to say that everybody that's financially um favored or whatever. I ain't gonna say favored. Let me take that word out of it. But everybody that's doing well financially is only because of God gave it to them. It's to say the man on the street corner is, is not favored by God either. It, it's That's what it, to me, that's what it contrasts. The poor and the, you know, rich. I'm not gonna say wealthy because they're in a whole nother category. Um, but that's, and so that's why I'm like, okay, you gotta be real careful with always, you know, um, putting it out there that because you have so much money, you know, you're favored by God or you're blessed by God financially. Could it possibly be that you actually worked your ass off? Excuse my French. That you went and you studied and you showed yourself approved and, and, and you did things. Sometimes it's ethical, sometimes it's unethical. That's the point I'm getting to. A lot of people got a lot of wealth, not all of them, but some of them because they had to step on the backs of somebody else or they had to do something they really didn't want to do so that they can earn the wealth that they wanted. And that wasn't necessarily a blessing from God. It's just an action and a consequence to that action that you made. So I want to make that perfectly clear because I get so sick and tired of people making assumptions that just because we're financially um what word i want to use stable just because we are that we're blessed that that was a blessing from god now i'm not saying it's not because 
God will show favor upon certain people financially. But I don't want us to always throw that out there because when you throw it out there, the person that's struggling or the person that's hurting and the person that's actually been working hard and striving to have better things when they don't have it and they serve God, then they start to question what's going on with me. Why am, am I not financially blessed or why does God not love me? Does God not show favor upon me? I've done everything he's commanded to me. I'm nice, I'm caring, I give my last, I work really hard, but I just don't have that. So that's why I say be very careful when we're so boastful, because I call it boasting, when we help or we give to other people, because what is that doing for God? What is that doing for him? When you go out and you help somebody poor, and I absolutely hate when people give to the poor and they film it. I absolutely hate that. Unless you've been poor and on your ass, you're not gonna understand what I'm saying. You're never gonna understand it. But that's the lowest point in some of our lives. When we're homeless, when we have nowhere to lay our heads, when we have no money to feed our families, when we have nothing, when we're pillar to post, when we gotta beg people to eat. I've been there. I've been there and not ever would I have wanted my picture taken because you're giving me a sandwich or a bottle of water or you're giving me a little cash that's not going to solve my problem. If you want to be, if you want to get a lot of attention and a lot of praise, if that's what you need to make yourself big and way up here then give people something that they're gonna learn how to fish with. Don't give them one meal, that's not gonna feed them. Teach them how to fish. Give them something substantial that they can go out on their own and build their own. Help them, that's really helping people. You giving me $50 is not helping me. It's, it's not helping me when the, there's still a problem there. Help me solve that problem. Give me suggestions. Help me, teach me how to fish so that I can go out and bring fish home to my family and feed my family as well. Okay, I'm sorry. I guess I'm dreaming now. Because some of our people feel like the only way they have power or the only way they're important is if they're doing so much better than everybody around them. So we're not gonna give them the method of fishing. We're not the, gonna give them the knowledge of how to invest or how to save our money. You know, we're not gonna give them that now we may charge them for it. And I never understand that. If you have the secret to wealth or you have the secret to help somebody get out of their struggle and you're gonna charge them for it, they don't have no money to give you. So how are they gonna get how are they gonna get where they need to go if they don't have any money to buy the secret or to buy what the, the knowledge that you have? What happened to us? What happened to us sharing with one another? What happened to us giving back? And I said something yesterday on one of my uh, Facebook posts. I said, um, I said, um, I said, I remember back in the days, uh, our elders used to give to people in secret and nobody would know because they knew that's how God intended it. Now, I don't have to throw scripture up here because most of y'all know it backwards and forwards, in and out, but yet you still don't follow it. So I don't even have to know, throw scripture out here because you already know the scripture that goes with this. But yet you don't care because you need, for some reason, that validates you. That says, that validates that you're a good person, that you have a good heart because you're helping the poor and you advertise it. And this could be hurting the people that you're actually helping because it's getting back to them that you've told people that you've helped them. Maybe they didn't want people to know that they were doing so badly. Maybe they wanted to kind of solve that problem on their own, but you didn't give them the opportunity because you put it all on front street. But there was a, a time where our elders would give in secret and they, I 
I mean, you find out after the person has passed on and they're gone that they had a whole foundation for children or for adults or for whoever they wanted to help. Trust funds and all that kind of stuff for people that they were helping. Nobody knew about it. There's a lot of that going on to this day. There's people helping other people that nobody knows about because that's how it was intended to go. And for, and I know you guys know the phrase, you know, what you do in secret, God will bless you in public. So if you get your praise, once you do something right then, that's all you're going to get because you put it out there he, he, he don't have to you know go the route that he wanted to go because you've already gotten everything you wanted your accolades you wanted to want it to be known that you have so much money that you can just give it away and you know what all that's cool if you got it to help but you don't have to blare it out in the open you don't have to do that to help other people when i help other people just helping other people makes my heart full nobody has to know but then again, I was, I was reared or my grandmother was around me a lot and she taught me a lot of wisdom. I, a lot of people said, even when I was a lot younger, that I had more wisdom for my age than they had ever seen because my grandmother was planting seeds and she was growing me up into the woman that I've become today. And that's just now not how our elders used to do things now, i know there's a whole nother generation out there and everything's about social media and everything's about showing people how well off you are or how much better you're doing but let me tell you guys something and i'm talking to my my community the african-american community if other community communities can get something from this then fine but i'm talking to us i don't care how well you're doing how financially set you are and so you've already set yourself up you've already set your grandkids your kids and their grandkids up they're set i get that part you're leaving a legacy but you're just one person if you got a whole community of people and i hope there's not a lot of feedback coming because i'm in my car driving uh, but if you got a whole your whole race of people then the majority 80 percent is lagging or 80 percent has is poverty stricken or in poverty stricken homes then our community our race has not arrived i don't know why we don't get that yet just because you made it it doesn't mean that as a, a whole that we've made it and that's what this thing should be about that's what we need to get a lot of other communities a races of people some of them have figured that out they help each other to build and come into community with one another to help one family build and then help the other family build and then before you know it their whole family structure has resources that that's sustainable i'm not talking about working paycheck to paycheck that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about actual sustainable resources because they went in together and helped one another. That's what we're lacking. Until we get that part, you're going to always see your brother on the street corner with a cup in his hand or, or your sister on the street corner with a cup in her hand with two or three kids on her side because she can't feed her children or he can't feed himself. Somebody put this brother the other day on social media. I guess he used to have money or whatever. And he was laying on the sidewalk, homeless, with no money, no food. And then his family supposedly are doing well. We failed that brother. We failed him. We f we're failing people every single day. And we absolutely have no problem with that because we just worry about our own little homes. And our people are suffering. At the end of the day, our people are suffering. So it is my prayer that, and I've made it to my office. A lot of these conversations, I don't like to, even though I can go into my office and do a video, but the things that I talk about, it's about our community. It's about us building and the majority of the people that's in my office, they have no clue of what I'm talking about. You know? 
um, many of them may try to act like there's no issues, but there's a lot of issues. People just don't want to hear about them. So I'll do my video on my own time and away from my office because I don't want to offend anybody because of my views. But this is something that really bothers me, bothers the hell out of me. And I've even told people that's close to me that I'm thinking about just coming off of social media altogether. And then I, and then I think about it and I say, well, no, because your messages still need to come out because they're not coming out. That part of uh, our um, dysfunction as a race is not coming out because everybody's showing the highlight reels of life. They're not showing the reality of what's really going on behind the scenes. And I mean, this goes like the beginning of this video is all about how we, we got to be careful how we help other people and how we want to take the praise that only belongs to God. So we need to start doing things more secretly. Now, if you want to keep giving and blaring it all out, then everybody know, everybody's going to know you're a joke. Everybody's going to know that, you know, you need that validation or there's something you're trying to prove. I don't know what it is about some people, but they're trying to prove something and, and you can't do that in that way. You, there's some, there may be some more work that needs to be done within you and you feel like you need validation from the world because you're helping people. There's something missing there. And I don't, and, and, and I stand by my message. If anybody can't receive it, then it may not be for them. But I stand by the message that I'm saying because I see the after effects of people helping other people and then putting it on blast, which makes them feel 10 times worse than if you didn't try to help them at all. So that's one of it. The other one, the other thing that I absolutely don't like about social media is because Instagram. Uh, I don't think, I think Facebook is almost getting to that, but I think it's more so Instagram uh, with the picture that's being painted to our young women that's coming up, young teenagers, young women that's coming up that they gotta look a certain way, they gotta dress a certain way, they gotta act a certain way to be accepted. And, and, and it's all such a lie and it's destroying lives and, and it's just horrible because everybody's going out and they're getting all these surgeries and they're changing how God created them and made them. They're already beautiful, they're already naturally beautiful, they don't need uh, all the harsh surgeries that they're having and some of them are dying because of it and I always tell my girls all the time hey when I see them on it can you please put that down for a while please don't be looking at Instagram all day because it's all it's doing is it's affecting your subconscious mind and then before you know it you're mimicking everything that you see on social media and it's all a lie it's all a lie and I just feel like I hate that our women or women in general, because it's happening to other cultures too, feel that we have to look a certain way to be considered beautiful. And it's such a lie because I think God made each and every one of us with a certain type of beauty. He gave us the uniqueness and that's what makes us all beautiful. I think that we're unique, that we're different. But if we all get pushed into this box that the world says is beautiful, then we all look the same and there's no uniqueness about us. And I think that's a tragedy within itself. And I just wish it would stop. I, I just, I, I cringe when I think about the little girls that's coming up into it. it and because they don't see how beautiful they are. And I, I mean, I even talk to women that's my age and I, I hear them saying, yeah, I'm going to get a BBL. Oh yeah, I'm going to get a tummy tuck. Oh yeah, I'm going to get something done to my nose because I don't like my nose or my lips. And I'm looking at these women and I'm like, you're beautiful. I don't see anything wrong with you, but they don't see it because of what they see every day when they scroll down their social media. They see perfection. But half the time, those pictures are, what do you call it? Photoshopped or enhanced. So that's not the true person. When you go and meet the true person, she looks nothing like her pictures a lot of the times. And so you're basing your beauty off of something that's fake, that's not really real, versus who you really are. So it's very, very dangerous. And I think we need to learn how to use the social media outlet uh, channels in more positive ways and, and, and 
actually do away with the photoshopping actually do away with all the filters and just be who we are as women and as men and that's going to take us digging internally we have to really know ourselves inside and love ourselves and accept ourselves and say i don't care if you think because of this i know what god told me and what god told me is my truths so i don't need anybody else to explain that for me now i'm gonna get off of here because i think i've said enough and i got a lot of work to do i'm juggling two businesses so i the, the first part of the day i'm going in there and i'm doing my real estate business and then the second part of the day i'm doing my tax business so i i'm i'm doing this juggling act and then i try to get these videos out to help um spark some type of change thought patterns like to change our thoughts because until we change our thoughts we can't change our mind so that's why i take the time out and i do these little videos and i hope that it helps somebody i hope that somebody that really does because i really do believe people that give have good hearts i believe that but i think because of the the, the um uh the essential like the 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 social media nature the I don't know it's a word i'm trying to say that i can't think of right now but um everything's so sensualized or everything just so like because of that need or that desire to be validated or accepted by everyone around you it's more important than the gift that you're trying to give then the gift kind of gets lost in that and i just wish that we would go back to giving people we're not letting everybody know because that gift is more valuable. You're actually helping somebody without blaring it out to the world. And God sees that. And then he'll reward you even more if you don't put this, you know, the destitution of other people out on blast. Like, look at me. I'm the savior. You're not the savior. You're just a vessel. If God did bless you with gifts to give... He blessed you because he, he intended for you to give it to other people, too, to help other people. You're the vessel. He's the God. Let go of the God complex. You're not God. We're not God. We're just simply vessels, and we're helping the people that God wants us to help through us. And so I just want us to kind of focus on those areas of giving and being more secretive. Now, I know there are organizations out there that have to kind of show what they're doing in the community. I'm talking about the politicians and big organizations that go out and help. I know that they may have to advertise that so they can keep getting their grants, their grant money in or whatever they're getting in uh, to help them to continue the community development. I get that. This is not about community giving to community. That's not what this this is about individualism this is about the individuals that choose to give and put everybody on blast after they do it or while they're doing it and the, the one that i hate the most is when i see people hungry or homeless and there's a camera in front of their face and people are giving them water or sandwiches please stop that you don't know how that feels unless you've been there and i've been one of those people that's been there before it doesn't feel good it makes you feel like what's wrong with me why can't i take care of myself does god not favor me am i the misfit should i just leave this world should i take my life that's how bad it gets i'm trying to bring this home because i think people are missing it you want to give somebody hope but you got to watch how you do that you have to watch how you give to people because you can make them feel worthless if you're not careful, be careful how you give to other people and make sure your motives are pure. If your motives aren't pure, you do better not even helping nobody. You do better not giving to people. Watch that, please watch that because I've been on the receiving side of that and it's not good, it's not healthy and it doesn't give people hope. It's just temporary vanity because you're getting the vein from showing everybody you're helping somebody else but that other person is feeling like shit because they can't go buy themselves a two dollar sandwich or a dollar bottle of water that's how you're making them feel if you're not careful there's a way of doing everything 
and we just have to learn how to do those things so that's the the first part of my video the secondly the second part is uh all the instagram crap that's going on and it may be other channels that's doing it with all the fake beauty and all the uh the examples of fake beauty going down our young women's timeline and then um i noticed one one young lady in particular she was scrolling down instagram and she just started her whole face started to change she started getting depressed because she's seeing something she can't emulate she's seeing something that she's not and she's like oh wow i really am ugly or oh wow you know uh, my boys are not gonna like me unless I look like that oh wow now I gotta look like that wow how am I gonna look like that wow and then all the questions start coming up and then they stop and they could be very beautiful little girls but because they don't look like what's in front of them that they're the, the soup you know the uh, social media posts look like now all of a sudden they're doubting their God-given natural beauty and that's poisonous and it's not of God and if I could just throw, do away with it, I would. I would just throw Instagram away, Snapchat, all of that stuff that shows fake lives. I, I would just throw it away. Like if I had one wish, Lord, do away with Instagram. Teach us how to, to love ourselves again. Teach us how to engage each other humanly without the social media, without all the fakeness. I would just do it away. Uh, so that's what this video is about. It's it's about social media could be a good outlet. It could be a good tool that we could use, uh, but we make it so bad. We make it so dirty. And and I, and I'm just challenging everybody that watched this video today to do something that's gonna make social media favorable. That's gonna make it build other people up and not tear them down. So watch how you put stuff out there. And I know a lot of people are gonna say, you can't tell me nothing. I know this and I know that and I'm special and I'm this and I'm that. You can't tell me how to give my gifts and you, you, I do what I wanna do. Well, you keep on doing what you wanna do, but one day God may show up and God has a way of humbling us. When, we got, when we've gotten too high, he got a way of bringing us back down to reality and say, no, look, I wanna use you, but it seems that you've lost that. So now I got to bring you back down home so you can get where I need you to be. I want you to be this high, but I don't want you to be that high and look down on people. So let me bring you back down so you can get this thing right because I need to use you. That's the whole purpose. God needs to use us and he needs to use us in positive ways. It's not about us. It's about him. So more of him, less of us. Let's try to get this thing together. And I just pray that somehow, some way we can transform this social media thing so it can be a more positive experience for everybody that uses it. Remember uh, my channel. If you haven't clicked and liked my channel, go ahead and subscribe to my channel, Restoring Ghettos Forgotten. Um, it was called G Restoring Ghettos Forgotten Daughters, but I don't want to leave the brothers out because I feel that I have something uh, to encourage them with too because I have three brothers and I love our men so I, I took the daughters out and I'm just gonna do restoring ghettos forgotten so please uh, click to subscribe and uh, follow me and share uh, some of my posts I really appreciate you guys I love you I hope you stay encouraged keep your head up high and remember don't base your life based off of the highlight reels of other people that are just being pretentious. Bye-bye, have a good day.